Konami has a wide variety of rhythm games that they've tried over the years. From more traditional games like Dance Dance Revolution to weirder games like Reflect Beat, they aren't afraid to try something new and experiment with new gameplay elements. Indicative of this is Muzeka. Released in 2015, it drew attention to itself with its unique control scheme and art style. The concept of the game was Music Game X Illustration, incorporating heavy art and drawing themes, and with the characters of the game based on a heavily stylized and sharp art style. The mascot, Illil, is a great representation of this style, with a cool, modern, and clean design, and with her color scheme matching the white, black, and slight red that the game has a lot of, as well as the machine itself. Along with the mascot, there are other characters in the game known as Graphica. Graphica are illustrations of characters that act as your sort of team in Muzeka, helping you throughout the gameplay in various ways. There are a wide range of different Graphica to cover the game's type system, giving a bonus when you're using a type that counters the opposing Graphica's type. This system is present within missions when you're unlocking other Graphica to add to your team. And I understand this stuff about Graphica might be slightly confusing, uh, it's almost like this is foreshadowing a problem. The gameplay itself consists of five buttons arranged in a three top, two bottom pattern. The large colored buttons can of course be hit, but also spun, being built in conjunction with a rotary encoder. There's also a foot pedal in the middle of the cabinet on the floor for hold notes that are placed throughout the songs in the centers of a chart. When handling notes in the game, aside from the standard rhythm game single notes and hold notes, the spinner notes provide some added difficulty and complexity to the game. On lower difficulties, a chart may prompt you to spin the buttons in any direction instead of pressing it in time. This is Muzeka's main appeal and can be a blast as some of the charts send you all over the controller spinning the buttons. The difficulty ramps up a bit with storm notes and directional spin notes, requiring either a stronger spin or a spin in a specific direction, respectively. These add a good amount of complexity to the charts and can really ramp up the difficulty on the higher levels. There's also kick notes, which are hit with the foot pedal. So this may be an unpopular opinion, but for me, there are very few games that are made better with the addition of a foot pedal, aside from games like Rock Band. In Muzeka, the kick notes are basically just hold notes that you press with your feet, and in my experience are not a meaningful addition to the gameplay loop. For me, the spinning buttons were enough, but it's there nonetheless. All these note types come together to make a frantic and fast rhythm game that will have you moving your hands in a flurry to keep up with the spinning and tapping. The game has its own proprietary score rating system, and the score for every song caps at 1 million points. To briefly explain score caps, this is basically what happens when 100% of a game's score is based on your overall accuracy. 1 million points would be basically equivalent to a 100%, meaning you got a perfect on every note. No matter how many notes there are in a song, they always add up to 1 million, i.e. a perfect. Other games have this as well, notably Osumania and Samboltex. The game launched to some decent success and interest, though a notable issue from the start was confusion surrounding the game's UI and progression system via the graphicas. Down the line, Konami would make a move to revitalize the game and address some of the game's main issues. Muzeka 1 plus 1 half was a major renovation and update to the original game, though not technically a new version and more of an appended update to address issues and change the game. In the original game, there was basically a story mode the game forced you into if you wanted to unlock anything in the release shop, and there wasn't really a standard play the game kind of mode. In 1 plus 1 half, they changed the modes entirely and added a pure mode and a mission mode. Pure mode is what it sounds like, it's the standard rhythm game, and you can unlock songs just by playing the game and acquiring currency. Graphica now do absolutely nothing in this mode, though you can level them up to be used in the mission mode. Mission mode is where you unlock said Graphica, and the element system involved in the Graphica is activated in this mode to assist in completion of missions. Other than that, there were a lot of quality of life features added in 1 plus 1 half, like gameplay modifiers such as mirror and random, a simpler UI, less graphica types, and a lot of stuff to make the game a bit more palatable. Unfortunately, new signs on the horizon indicated that Muzeka 1 plus 1 half may not have been good enough to keep the game alive. There were a few problems present for Muzeka that didn't bode well for it early on in its life. For starters, the game had five location tests in Japan. For those who don't know, a location test is basically where a game company will hold an event and put a new game out on the arcade floor for some people to try out and potentially give feedback on the game. While it's not the most location tests for a game, five is certainly a lot of tests for a game for its first time around. For comparison, Sound Voltex had three location tests on its original version, so this could have potentially indicated issues with the game early on. 
Another issue to note about Muzeka is that the mechanism for the buttons is complex, since it contains a mechanism that can be both pressed and spun. Oftentimes, the spinner trigger mechanisms would either not fire or fire on their own, causing difficulty playing the game, and players at Round 1 arcades in the US would often find arcade operators fixing the controller due to issues. The foot pedal, as mentioned before, was a bit contentious as well, as the mechanic was not very fleshed out in gameplay, allowing for only hold notes. The biggest nail in the coffin for Muzeka's coming demise, however, is something colloquially known as the KAC Curse. If you don't know what the KACs are, they're the Konami Arcade Championships, the yearly invitational tournament held by Konami for all active Konami arcade games, where the finals of the tournament are held and where new games are revealed. If you want to know more about the KACs themselves, I have a video about that on my channel already, so go check that out. This year's KACs are coming up at the time of this video releasing, in fact. Around the arcade rhythm gaming scene, there came to be known a term coined the KAC Curse. Basically, when an active game doesn't have a spot at the KAC, it often means the game is going to be shelved. A big reason for Konami to have the game at the KACs other than the tournament is to promote what's coming up for the game, whether that's a new song update or an entirely new version. So from a marketing standpoint, it's easy to see that if the game isn't going to be at the KAC, they have no plans, at least in the near future, to update or release a new version of the game. Muzeka felt this in the 2018 KAC, where it did not make an appearance. Sadly, this did in fact confirm the upcoming death of the game. Later on in 2018, the death of the game was essentially confirmed. Sometimes when a Konami game is going to be discontinued, their machines will be decommissioned and converted to use the parts in another game. This began happening to Muzeka in June of 2018, when conversion kits for Bishibashi Channel were sent out that used pieces of the Muzeka machine. It's not super important to the story, but Bishibashi is an arcade game often involving the smashing of buttons very rapidly, along with various other crazy minigames. The new version of Bishibashi used a few of the spinning buttons from Muzeka's cabinet to allow each player in Bishibashi to have one spinning button for more gameplay opportunities. This conversion phenomenon notably happened to Beatstream as well, but that's a story for another day. Not all Muzeka cabinets were converted to Bishibashi, however. Around the same time, offline conversion kits were also sent out to some arcades. These would convert the game to be playable entirely offline, as eAmusement arcade games from Konami normally require a connection to the eAmusement server to even start up. This offline patch removed that requirement and also unlocked all music in the game, as progression would no longer be possible via profiles once the game was taken offline. eAmusement service still ran for the game for about a month after the offline conversion kits were sent out. Interestingly, the game actually got one more patch after the offline conversion kits were sent out. There was found to be a bug in the spinner judgment for the offline conversion release. The update was sent out the day before the last day of online service for machines that were still connected to the internet. Interestingly, since some of the machines were already taken offline at this point, if requested, Konami would send out a USB device to arcades containing a patch for the bug. This was the last update the game would receive, and on July 31st, 2018, Service for the game was removed from Konami's servers. Muzeka was an interesting game, with some good ideas. Most people I know that played it agreed that the spinner notes were a lot of fun and a great idea, and the overall theming of the game was very unique and appealing to some players. A lack of clear design in the game itself, coupled with a massively confusing progression system in the original version, tripped the game up on release, and Konami was forced to spend time smoothing the game out rather than getting a meaningful version update out for the game, which was probably the nail in the coffin. Some different progression design approaches, and maybe even a removal of the foot pedal to keep the game focused on the spinning mechanic, could have kept the game going for a few more versions possibly, but as it stands now, Muzeka joins the ranks of dead rhythm games. Thanks for watching. Check out my Twitter and my Twitch, links are in the description below. I'm actively streaming on Twitch right now, and the stream schedule can be found below my profile on my Twitch page. You can also check out my Patreon if you want to support my content. If you like this video, don't forget to like and subscribe, and I'll see you guys next time.